On this episode of It's Me or the Dog, Victoria meets Ryan and Linda, whose barbecue dreams have been put on hold due to their three disorderly dogs. Chihuahua Killer attacks anyone who comes near her, while recent rescue Weston has single-handedly destroyed the backyard. Lab Doyle's unusual fear of water. Doyle has not had a bath in approximately nine months. Is also driving guests away. He sometimes stinks. With their dogs scaring off the neighbors, hey, hey. the couple has put fun in the sun on the back burner. Uh, who cleans up? I ask Brian to help me. He just kind of ignores me. Can Victoria get these two to work together? Brian, what are you doing? Or will their barbecue dreams go up in smoke? No more arguments. The backyard is disgusting. And who wants to have a barbecue, eat food, in a backyard that's covered in poop? Victoria Stillwell has been training dogs in both Great Britain and the United States for nearly 14 years. Today, she's on her way to help Ryan and Linda handle their three unruly dogs. Summer is a great time to have friends over and enjoy the backyard, but it can be tough if you have dogs that don't like people or who are turning your yard into an eyesore. Before Victoria begins training, she'll spend a day observing the issues at hand. We have a beautiful home. It would be nice to have people over not worried about being embarrassed about the backyard. I'm Hello. So excited Hi. To meet you. Hello. Hi, Victoria. How are you? Hi, nice I'm to meet you. Thank you. This is our daughter. This is McKenna. Hi, McKenna. My name is Ryan Pringle. I live here with uh, my fiance, Linda, and our th okay. daughter, McKenna, and our three dogs, Doyle, the White Lab, Weston, the Pound Puppy Mixed Dog, and Killer Cha Cha, the little Chihuahua. <laughs> Ryan and Linda have had a hard time entertaining guests because of their three dogs. I would love to get to the point where we could have a big barbecue and it just be peace and not the usual chaos. They're having problems, especially with one-year-old Weston, who's destroying the backyard. We had all the landscaping was in, the lawn was in great shape, but since Weston got a hold of the sprinkler heads and started digging holes, it doesn't look nearly as good as it used to. Please don't oh, eat the sprinkler. Weston's eating the sprinkler right there. Along with chewing sprinkler heads, Victoria notices something else disturbing outside. Well, there's a lot of poop around as well. Uh, who cleans up? Originally, we had a deal where Linda would get it during the, the week and I would get the weekend. Uh, are you picking up the, on the weekends, though? Not all the time. Oh. But ask her the same oh. question. Is she picking up are during, you the picking up the during the week all the time? I normally pick up oh. once a day. You at are. least once a day, at least. If you ask her, she'll tell you that I never pick up poop, and she always does. Yet every time when I go out there to pick up poop, there's plenty of it out there, like it hasn't been picked up recently. There seems to be a battle of wills between Linda and Ryan. Each one blames the other, says the other one is not putting the work in. I don't think it's fair to have three dogs if you don't have the time to spend. And the problems don't stop there. Ryan and Linda take Victoria out front to show her the issues they have with their neighbor's dogs. It definitely puts a strain on our relationship with our neighbors that, that we can't actually interact more because of the dogs and, and them wanting to fight each other. And if we could just get them to get along, it really would be nice so that we can interact and, and converse with our neighbors a little more. You know, I'd love to be able to get together with Linda and Ryan and have a backyard barbecue, but it's really unfortunate because our dogs don't get along. It's not going to happen. All right, I don't need to see any more, so I think that's very loud. And it's waking up the whole neighborhood. Your neighbors must love you. Back inside, Victoria gets to know Linda and Ryan's seven-year-old chihuahua killer. Okay. Oh, oh, I yeah. see now. Yeah. <laughs> so, Killer, why did you get your name? Actually, okay. when I got her, she was very loving, sweet, and I just thought it would be funny. Oh, so you named her, and she was to the total opposite of Killer, but yeah, she just grew into the name. Grew into her name. <laughs> we love to entertain. We love to have people over, and it's extremely difficult to do not knowing how Killer's going to react to our friends and their children. It's okay. Good girl. Why is she yellow? Um, she likes to change her different color first. Linda <laughs> likes to change her to different color first. She was green, and now it's faded into a yellowish. Okay. Oh. 
Okay. okay. Straight away, I could see a completely stressed out, nervy, and unhappy dog. She has bitten on many, many occasions. She's bitten all kinds of people. She's very, very fearful. When did she turn just from being a happy chihuahua to being a killer? I had my daughter, and all of my energy and all my attention was with killer. She was my baby. And then now, ever since the dynamic has changed a little bit, I think she's resentful. What's she like with McKenna? She bit McKenna. Where, where did she bite her? She bit her on the hand. OK. McKenna's only two years old. And she's already been bitten once. Quite likely, it's going to happen again. I know if she was a bigger dog, I think that she wouldn't have lasted as long as she has here in this house. It would have been curtains a long time ago. Next, Victoria observes bath time with three-year-old lab Doyle. Doyle is afraid of water. He's a lab, and he has webbed feet, but he wants nothing to do with the water. Doyle has not had a bath in approximately nine months. Can I see you? Try to get him in the bathroom, see the, we see can the try, deal, yeah. and... Um... We can try. It's difficult that Doyle hates water because he's a big dog. He sometimes stinks. Linda tries to entice him into the bath with treats, but Doyle resists every time. Ooh, yummers. Yummy. Come on, buddy. Well, you got him in for a moment. <laughs> yeah. Curiouser and curiouser. A Labrador that does not like water. Doyle may have a fear of water, but Weston has some distress of his own. Weston has huge separation anxieties from Doyle. If I have to take Doyle away from Weston, Weston will lose his mind. I really want to see if Weston really does have separation anxiety. So I'm going to do a setup where Linda takes Doyle out of the house, and I want to see how Weston reacts. OK. It's OK, buddy. It's OK. Weston. Wow. This is pretty wow. standard for what wow. he does. I know, buddy, I know. Wow, that's that's anxiety. Yeah. I was really shocked by the severity of Western separation anxiety. He was beside himself. He was panicking. And that was awful to see. Because of Weston's anxiety, Linda is forced to walk all the dogs together. McKenna was napping, so I had Linda just take the three dogs and the stroller so I could witness what a walk was like. Wait, I asked Brian to help me with the dogs, and he just kind of ignores me. And it's gotten to the point where it's just easier if I do it myself. So you've got one hand on the stroller with Killer here. Yep. And then I got the other two big dogs. I was a little concerned taking Victoria out on a walk with the three dogs because I knew it was going to be chaotic. And even though it looks chaotic, it's almost, I feel like it's structured chaos. Weston, leave it. Doyle, leave it. Stop. No. Eh. Oh, oh, whoa. oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. OK, I've got that. I've got it. I've got it. Leave it. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Linda would have me believe that it's controlled chaos. No, 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 no. Nothing controlled about this chaos. It's just chaos. I'm worried about McKenna. I, I think this is one of the most uh, out of control situations that I've seen walking. Tell me about Ryan not walking as much as he should do. Does that frustrate you? It does, because I realize that this is not the ideal situation, but the alternative is that my big dogs don't get walked at all. Linda's struggling because she spoke to me about Ryan not helping out, but he has to carve time out of his day to help Linda with the walking. He has got to step up to the plate, and he's got to put more time and effort into his dogs. Coming up, Victoria confronts Linda and Ryan with the facts. Ryan, what are you doing? But when she brings in a medical expert to deal with Weston's anxiety, will Linda take the doctor's advice? I don't want him to change. I want him to be the same dog that I know and I love so much. If they want to entertain guests in their backyard in the coming months, they'll have to get with Victoria's program. I want to start, first of all, by looking at Killer. And she's, yeah, like, boom. Stop dying, the dog. She does look like another dog's urinated on her. 
All right, I won't die her anymore. Now, the reason why her nervous state worries me is that she is in a constant state of stress. Even when you don't think she's in stress, her body physically is in stress. And that's when disease occurs. Put yourself in her position. There's somebody who's rejected her. Mama. You were everything to her. Mm -hmm. You treated her like your child. You dressed her up. She was always with you, always close to you. And then you had your daughter. And you pushed her away. And she went through a massive emotional change. She was rejected. I'm a little hurt and resentful that I've provided a very nice life for her. And I'm sorry I hurt her feelings, but, you know. Stop saying she's punishing me. Dogs don't know how to punish. Now, as a mum, there's no way that a dog comes before a child. Of course you're gonna have more attention on McKenna, but your dog suffered because of it. I just feel bad. Oh, hey. Because I love a killer. I know you do. I would I never do anything do. to purposely hurt her. It was a very eye-opening conversation that I had with Victoria. I was hurt to think that I was doing something to cause killer to be not so sociable. You'll help me, right? Of course. <laughs> And of course, Weston and Doyle, they have their issues too. You know, Weston with the destruction. And mainly the sad thing is the anxiety. He's a nervous ninny. Yeah. When Doyle goes away, I think it's, it's just a panic. We gotta get on top of this. Separation anxiety is a very, very difficult behavior to treat. There are no quick fixes. Ryan, what are you doing? I work. <laughs> so does she. She has a baby. I know. What about the poop? And McKenna's out there. This is an issue of health and safety with your child. You have two big dogs. Big dogs, they produce a lot of poop. You spend a lot of your time cleaning up poop. That's the deal. But, oh, wouldn't it be easier if you took them out on a walk more so they would have more chances to poop outside on a walk and pee outside on a walk than in your backyard? Yeah. In order to be able to work through this, you need to be on the same page. Are you ready to do it? Because we're, oh my gosh, we have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before she can begin training, Victoria needs to establish a positive relationship with Killer. At the moment, she wants to bite me. And I can't work with an aggressive dog when it feels that way towards me. I wanted to take Killer out onto neutral territory and have a little bit of a bonding time with her. And if she could take treats, to take treats from me. She ate them when I put them on my legs, and then, eventually, she took them from my hand. She was interested in coming into my personal space. There was no pressure on her whatsoever. Should we go back? Shall we? It was a lovely moment. I love it when a dog's gone from wanting to bite me to wanting to be with me. Now, Victoria wants Linda to begin rebuilding her damaged relationship with Killer. The relationship between Linda and Killer has been really profoundly affected by the birth of McKenna. And I want to be able to get that relationship back to what it was like before McKenna was born. You sit and you have some calm time because it's all about lowering her stress levels. She was so happy, she was so positive. Killer took treats out of my hand. This is so crucial. And it might not happen every day. It would be great if it could. This is important. When a dog associates a human being with good things, it's more likely to come to them. I think she was pleasantly surprised and optimistic for the future. I think that relationship is just going to keep growing. With Killer showing some real progress, Victoria can turn her attention to Weston. But first, she wants to consult a veterinarian about his anxiety. Hi, Scott. Hi, Vicky. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. My name is Scott Amsell. I'm a small animal practitioner. I've got a wide variety of experiences with species ranging from zoo animals to dogs and cats. Victoria has asked me to come here today to give a medical opinion on Weston's separation anxiety. Do you know his background before he was in the shelter? 
We know Linda's sister found him and another small dog running the streets. I see. She's the one that, that took him into the pound. We put up right. signs, couldn't find the owner. Right, right. Um, but he was, he did seem very attached to that other little dog. I see. OK, well, that could be an issue. All right, what we can do then, Ryan, is if you stay here and if you don't mind Linda taking Doyle out, and then we will see what Weston does. Sit. As soon as Doyle even begins to look like he's going out the door, Weston starts to become hypervigilant. As soon as he goes out the door, Weston actually has almost a full-blown panic attack. Westy, it's okay. I think Dr. Amsel was shocked, just as I was, and just stressed to see a dog being so panicked. It's quite distressing, isn't it, when you see that? Well, it's it's seeing uh, a dog in, in tremendous emotional distress. Yeah. And it's not a pretty sight. OK, it's OK. Come on. Come on. Now that he's observed Weston's anxiety firsthand, Dr. Amsel is ready to give his assessment. Dogs actually can experience grief. And it's very possible that Weston, when he goes to the shelter and boom, his buddy's taken away, uh, that's a traumatic thing. And that's not anthropomorphizing. They have emotions, too. And now he is having almost like a post-traumatic stress response because the same thing is happening over again. What we need to try and do is, is cut that off at the pass. So I definitely think he would benefit tremendously from medication. I didn't think Weston's behavior was that severe. I was very surprised. Dr. Amsel has recommended a sort of two-pronged approach, uh, an anti-anxiety medication which works pretty quickly just to dampen the panic, and also a SSRI, fluoxetine, which keeps the happy chemical serotonin, more of that in the brain. Are we going to see any changes in his demeanor or, or personality? Uh, ideally, no. We don't want to see that. Overall, we really love Weston the way he is. We like his temperament. We like his demeanor. I think Linda and Ryan are a little skeptical. Ryan's worried that medication is going to dampen Weston's personality. But if it's administered carefully and correctly, there should be no change in his personality whatsoever. It just dampens the panic down. When Doyle leaves, he's having the same kind of response that you and I would have if something traumatic happened in our lives. He's having a panic attack, and I think he would benefit greatly from that. Whatever you yeah, need. Yeah, if we can help him. It makes me sad to think that, you know, Weston's going through that much trauma. Bottom line is, we love him. We want what's best for him. So if Dr. Amsel feels that we need to put him on some sort of medication, then that's what we'll do. Medication should never be given alone. This is a support to behavior modification. And it's vital that the two be done together. All right, thank you, Doctor. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. What concerns me the most is I don't want him to change. I want him to be the same dog that I know and I love so much. Coming up, Victoria puts Weston's extreme anxiety to the test. He might go crazy again. I don't know. But Weston's not so sure. He is a little bit nervy. He's a bit frightened of what's going to come at him. Come on. Killer, why did you get your name? Victoria Stillwell has been trying to get Linda and Ryan back on track so they can host a backyard barbecue for their friends and neighbors. Now that Weston is getting the medical treatment he needs, Victoria wants to begin training him to be more independent of Doyle. When you had taken Doyle out previously to me coming here, Weston had got so anxious, you took him for a walk. And it was on that walk that he was able to expel his energy and to calm down. I want to use this information that you've given me and see if we can't do some kind of management behavior modification plan. Whereby, if you know that Doyle is going to go to the veterinarian, or if you know that he's going to move away for a certain amount of time, that before he's taken out, Weston's taken out by himself. OK. He might go crazy again. I don't know. But let's just try it. Let's get his leash on, and we're just going to go. OK. All right? Let's go. Come on, then. I don't know if this is going to work, because Weston still could be very, very stressed when he comes back in the house and realizes Doyle's not there, but it's, a, it's worth a try. 
Westy. Stay right here with me. Now, this is pretty telling. There's a lot to deal with, with barking dogs on either side. It's OK. That's it. Leave it. When Weston's outside, he is a little bit nervy. He's a bit frightened of what's going to come at him. So I wanted to do some focus work with Weston and do some commands to see if he can focus on anything else except the scary environment around him. Hey, hi. Good boy, sit. Good boy. That's the focus I want, thank you. Good, let's go, good. All of this, refocusing his mind, it's, it's so important. So if you take the leash, make him sit, lie down whenever you want. OK. Get that relationship going out on a walk. Sit. Good. Good boy. Good. Lovely. Get that focused. Lovely. OK. While they were out, Victoria had Linda take Doyle on a walk to see how Weston reacts when he gets home. On the way back, this is where I was starting to get a little worried that Weston was going to freak out. Is he going to be as stressed out? I hope not. Let's go. In the past, Weston has always freaked out when he's not around Doyle. So I don't know what's going to happen when we take him back into the house. All right, killer. OK, come here. Come here. Sit. Good. 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 All right. Lovely. Now he's probably going to go get some water. Yeah, that's usually Hi. the end. Now what's he going to do? Let's sit on the sofa, shall we? Hi. Good boy. Good boy, West. See what a difference this is. It really is Doyle being taken away before him that yeah. he cannot cope with. I like this. I, I really fully expected him to run around the house looking for Doyle, um, at least for a little while. Uh, but he really kind of just one loop, not really worrying about it. I feel really good because I had a hunch that Weston was going to be a lot more chilled out, and I was proved right. It's a star. He's just a completely different dog um, from when, before when Doyle was, was gone. He was a maniac. Mm -hmm. Now he acts like uh, like any other day when Doyle's in the other room or something. It's it's a big transformation. Yeah. Yeah. Once Linda returns home. Victoria takes on an equally difficult task, curing Doyle's extreme fear of water. When you're dealing with emotions in dogs, there are no quick fixes. This is a, a walk-in, walk-out bath, so you don't have to have any kind of lifting. Cool. It's also got a rubber Perfect. mat. That's awesome. Yeah. It's got a rubber mat on the bottom as well, so the dog doesn't slip. And we put treats in here. I see the tub and I think, there's no way Doyle's going in this tub. I wasn't real optimistic that he was actually going to get in there. Go on. Yes, good boy. Good boy. Good boy, and now up there. Good boy, all right. Lots of treating. This is like jackpot, man. You did it, man. <laughs> Whoa, you get the good Good boy, now. buddy. Now I'm just going to get his paws used to being with water. Gonna touch his pores with it and treat him. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm actually really happy about this tub. It really is a great tool. We're building up positive association with this bath. Bath time is fun, it's not scary. Okay? okay. But this is a start. Coming up, if Linda and Ryan want to barbecue, they've got to clean up their disgusting poop filled yard. No more arguments, no ifs, ands, or buts. But will they get with the program? I'll be honest, we both break down and just, we end up letting them go outside. Okay. Victoria Stillwell has been working with Linda and Ryan's dog, Weston, to control his anxiety at home. Now she wants to work on improving Weston's reputation out in the neighborhood. Weston has an issue with the neighborhood dogs. The neighborhood dogs have a big issue with Weston. It's a bark fest when they see each other. And I just want to create a bit of harmony. First, Victoria tries to get Weston to focus on the presence of the other dog. He was getting very agitated. Turn around, refocus. 
I just took him in the other direction. I walked him away, and I only do that just to break focus. When Weston is calm, Victoria allows him to get a little closer. But when he reacts, she removes him. I just couldn't imagine that actually Mars and Weston could really make this happen. It just, they've never been friends, and it just wasn't a plausible thing. Mm -mm. But despite a few setbacks, Victoria is persistent. Go hunt for that. Good. Go. What's that? Then Victoria uses treats paired with the go get command to refocus Weston's attention. Has it. Go get it. The go get game is a really great game to play with reactive dogs because it refocuses the dog's attention from what it wants to react to onto something more positive. The dog's brain is working, trying to find the treat on the ground. It's refocusing on something, so the emotion is cut down. Here. Go get it. Oh, good. I just had to keep walking him and walking him till I got him to the point where he could be calm enough in Mars's presence. With both dogs finally calm, Victoria initiates a parallel walk down the street. All right. Where's that? Go get that. I was stunned by the results. Never before has Weston and Mars been actually able to walk side by side down the street without stress. So it was just a real treat for me. Good, Weston. I thought to myself, this can be done. We can get to the point where we can have our friends and neighbors over and not worry about Weston's reaction. Good boy. Now that Weston is behaving a little more neighborly, Victoria wants to improve the atmosphere at home as well. I have something for you here, and this is Little Killer House. <laughs> you have your own house. Killer's house is small, so it's killer size. I wanted to give her another option, so she can go here to get away from the dogs, to get away from McKenna, to get away from guests. This is her safe place. Now, it's an outdoor house, because you can use it outdoors as well when you have barbecues. I think Killer's house is a great idea. It's she. Killer really likes to have that feeling of protection, and I think that'll give it to her. Now it was time for Victoria to take on the disgusting backyard and give it back to the family. Here is a fence, and it's known as the poop fence. Because from now on, we're going to train the dogs to poop, not in your yard, but by the fence. OK. OK? Uh, <laughs> I was very, very skeptical. You bring them out on a leash. You take them into this little place. If they poop, good boy and a treat. After a while, and I'd say it's going to take a couple of weeks, the dogs are going to come out here off the leash by themselves, behind their fence, do their poop, and go back in. I wasn't quite sure how the dogs were going to make it their bathroom. I want you to be able to enjoy your backyard without having to tread in landmines. I want McKenna to be able to enjoy the backyard nice. without the threat of landmines and disease. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Lovely. Doyle went back there and he just did his business right there on the spot without even being told. Good. Yeah. You're a genius. Pooping behind the poop fences. You're fun. the smartest dog on the planet. I don't know whether that was great timing or just one smart dog that understands English, but my gosh, he got a lot of praise for that. Here is a poop chart. This is going to be charting when the dogs poop, how many times they poop, and who cleans it up. My favorite thing about the whole poop area was the poop board that allows us to track who's going, and more importantly, who's cleaning it up. No more arguments. You owe it to your daughter and to yourselves to clean it up. No ifs, ands, or buts. From now on, no more poop. This is a change. Soon they're going to be able to have barbecues here, and that's what we're aiming for. Wow, you got a lot of work to do. Yeah. OK? Yeah. It's time for me to leave Ryan and Linda now. Here is your homework, number one. You need to do a walking schedule, because both these dogs need to get out. No arguments. Ryan, you've got to help Linda. Linda, I'd like you to have your one-on-one -on -one time with Killer. Poop fence. It's not going to work if you do not do it 1,000% diligently. It's going to work. Yeah? Do Remember, it's summertime. This is the time for barbecues. Let's have a barbecue when I come back. If the backyard is cleaned up, I shall be back. Thanks again, Victoria. Bye, Victoria. See ya. Thank you. I really hope that they work. 
They've got a really tall order ahead of them because they've got two dogs especially with major emotional problems. If they don't put the work in, those dogs are not going to get better. I can guarantee them that. Coming up, Linda and Ryan attempt the training on their own. But the dogs aren't cooperating. Victoria Stillwell has left Ryan and Linda alone for a few days to see how well they do on their own. Linda's enjoying Ryan's newfound responsibilities of walking the dogs. Ryan has helped me more now than he ever has in the past. Good boys. Later on, Linda has a little one-on-one -on -one time with Killer. I have a little treat. The first treat is because I love you. The advice that Victoria gave me about Killer has been dead on. I just like turned a page in our book, and we just started all over again, and that's all we needed to do. We just let go of the past. Yeah, it's nice in there. As the day continues, Ryan and Linda start to prepare for their upcoming barbecue by giving Doyle his first bath in nine months. Yay! Yay! Good boy. Stay. Good boy. I'm so happy and proud that Doyle can actually get into the bathtub and we can have water on him and actually water in the tub. He's made huge progress so far. He's been doing awesome. Later in the week, Victoria checks in to see how Ryan and Linda are doing. Come on. Linda is ready to work on walking Weston with one of the neighborhood dogs. Whoa. Oh no, Weston, don't do that. Sit, come on. Come on. Sit. Come on. Come on. Come on. When Weston reacts, Linda pulls him away to regain his focus. Are you ready to try this? Sure. Great job, Linda. That is exactly what we worked on. Good job. Good job. Wow, they're walking side by side. That is amazing. Meanwhile, Ryan is working to get the backyard in shape for company. Now that Weston's not tearing the backyard up anymore as much, uh, we can actually start getting everything ready for a big barbecue. So far, we've been able to get the uh, flower beds replanted, building like a, a serving station for the grill, and just doing a general cleanup. It's, it's, I think it's really going to look nice when we're done. Backyard looks great, Ryan. I hope you're ready to have guests over so that all your hard work is paid off. Now that the yard is looking better, to keep it that way, they try to make their dogs use the poop fence. Go ahead, buddy. Now you gotta go. Go potty, buddy. Don't tell him, maybe it's pressure. Hey, I'm not looking. All right, don't look. Patience is something that I have to work on all the time. I'm not a very patient person by nature. Maybe if we you know, give him a little space. Ryan and I are very frustrated over trying to get the dogs to go behind the poop fence. I don't know what else I can do to make them go out there. It's OK, buddy. I'll be honest, we both uh, we break down and just we end up letting them go outside. Oh, no, guys. You have to be patient. Later that day, it's time for Linda and Ryan to give Weston his anti-anxiety medicine. I can totally tell the difference when Weston gets his medicine and when he doesn't. Yeah, no, he's, he's definitely, it's definitely helped him a lot. Did you know I did a little experiment where I took him off it for like a day? You mean the day that you forgot to give it to him? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not good. I intentionally did not give it to him because I wanted to see if it was the medication, because the first day it was fine when we forgot it. And then the same thing with the following day. I decided not to give it to him so I could see how he would react. Oh, Linda, you cannot change the administration of medication without consulting a professional first. That could be really dangerous for Weston. I could tell, like, when I walked him, the anxieties were coming back. I really need to get back there before they do some serious damage to Weston. Coming up, All right. Victoria lays down the law on Weston's medication. Don't miss a dose. Don't just one day yes and one day no. But is Linda willing to listen? Ryan and I had talked about it. Obviously, we don't want to keep it up for a long period of time. Missing a dose of medication is really highly detrimental to the dog. And will the backyard be ready for the big party? Don't you say, because I've had a lot of success with poop fences like that. Victoria is returning to continue her training and hoping that Linda and Ryan will finally be able to host a backyard barbecue. Hi. 
Hello, Hello. how are you? I'm fine, Good thank you. you. Even though Ryan and Linda had done really well in some aspects, there were some things that I needed to go over with them again. First of all, I want to start talking about the poop fence. What happened with the poop? And don't you say, because I've had a lot of success with poop fences like that. They just don't get it. Um... They don't get it, or you're not working hard enough at it. For the first two to three days, we tried it religiously. And we would time ourselves. We would be out there for a good 20, 25, sometimes 30 minutes. It's a long process, you know? Now, the other thing I was a bit concerned about, the medication. You forgot one time, the next day, you thought, oh, I'm not going to do it, see how he is. Why did you do that? Ryan and I had talked about it. I was like, well, how long should he be on medication? Um, obviously, we don't want to keep it up for a long period of time. Missing a dose of medication is one thing because you forget, but not giving it the next day because you think the dog seems fine just after a couple of doses is really highly detrimental to the dog. I told you that it takes a, around two to three weeks for the medication to get to a level where it's of some benefit. Don't miss a dose. He's not going to be on it for the rest of his life. Don't just one day yes and one day no. So you're dealing with chemicals in here. This kind of medication is not changing Weston's personality. It's not drugging him. It's allowing his brain to achieve the levels that he needs to feel less anxious. Bottom line, that's it. There are still some things I want to do with you, so let's get to work, all right? Come on, my love. Ooh, very nice. You've, got, you've actually got some flowers in there. Yeah. Oh, aren't they beautiful? Seriously, it went All back there. How long have they been in there for now? Uh, three days now. Three days, yeah. and they haven't been dug up? No. OK. The backyard looks great, but the dogs are still pooping out there, not behind their fence. What's this? <laughs> one time? No, it wasn't one time. That was the code brown. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't document the code yellows. Oh, I think it's important to document the pee. So just so you know how many times you brought them out here. I think you're going to have success with this. If you bring the dogs out right in the, in, in the morning and you hang out, if they don't go and you need to go inside, go inside and immediately bring them back out again and do this again and again and again and again, I guarantee you they will go. And if you want a poop-free yard, then you've got to put in the time. Smells good, huh, Weston? <laughs> After all of Linda and Ryan's hard work, they celebrate with a backyard barbecue. The yard looks fantastic now, doesn't it? Man, I can't believe they finally got Weston to quit tearing up the yard. I don't think I've ever been out here, truly. You haven't? No. Well, that was good until today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you didn't miss much. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't intentionally drag people out here before. Mm -hmm. it's now it's now we're pretty now. You can run around here and not feel like you're going to yeah. step in something. And we hope, yeah. <laughs> That's Killer's house. They seem a little more subdued. Yeah, yeah, Weston's a, a lot tamed. calmer. Yeah. Definitely. Now they got to work on us, huh, pal? <laughs> I come out to the backyard. It's in great condition, and the garden's in great shape. I'm able to go out to the uh, to the lawn. I really enjoy it now. You guys have been fantastic, and I just want to say, keep up the good work. Of course, you have your frustrations, but at the end of the day, your dog's welfare is benefiting now from what you've done. And I just hope that your family can exist in more harmony. Okay? Thank you so much for all your help. Yeah, thank you very much for You're all welcome. Your Just try keep going with the poop fence. Keep going. <laughs> we'll keep It'll going work. with the poop fence. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Get back and enjoy your party. Thank you. See you guys. See Bye. Ya. Come on, Keely. Thanks to our new skills that we've acquired, it's going to be a great summer for us, and we're really going to get an opportunity to enjoy our new backyard and our barbecue. Since I left Linda and Ryan, they've been really sticking to the training plan, and things are going very well with their dogs. Handle your business. It took a while to get both the dogs used to the, the poop fence, but now that they're getting the hang of it, it's getting easier. It's really good that Linda and Ryan stuck with the poop fence, because now with just a little patience and encouragement, the dogs are going in on their own. 
particular. She is um, so much more friendly. She'll come up to me in any situation. I love it. It's ridiculous how, how much happier she is overall. She hasn't, she hasn't bitten anybody in weeks. I'm really glad that Linda worked with Killer in her dog house because she's now going in on her own and loving it. OK, bath time, come on. The bathtub that, that Victoria gave us has worked out great for Doyle to the point now where he doesn't want to get out of it once you get in there. Good boy. We've continued Weston on his medication, and he's doing outstanding. He's so much more calm. He can handle it when Doyle leaves. We can take Doyle out to use the poop fence. He's fine with it. Good boys. Linda and Ryan have really worked hard to get their life back, and now they can finally enjoy their backyard with family, friends, and dogs. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.